Hi, it's Ted Patterson with another video in our video series titled Fast Break into Custom Visual Development. In this video, we're going to look at creating and testing your first custom visual in Power BI. Before we get started, there's a couple things you're going to have to install. One, you're going to have to install Node.js. It's free. You can download it and install it in just a couple minutes. Now, during the video, we're going to install the Power BI visual tools. I've already installed Node.js. And when you install Node.js, it installs Node Package Manager, which we use to install the Power BI Visual Tools. Now, once we've installed the Visual Tools, we're going to run a command to create a local self-signed certificate. Now, we're also going to need something to write code in. So you can install Visual Studio Code, which is a lightweight alternative to Visual Studio, which has been very popular for Node.js style development. Or you can install Visual Studio 2017. Visual Studio Code is great, however, classic old timers like me love the Visual Studio experience, so I'm going to demo working with both. What do you mean you haven't installed the RTM version of Visual Studio 2017? It's been up there for over 24 hours. Anyway, let's open up the Node.js command prompt, and first I'll move over to the folder where we'll be creating our custom visuals in C Student Custom Visuals. Now, before we can do anything, we're going to use the Node Package Manager npm install command to install the Power BI visual tools. Now, they install in about six or seven minutes. I sped things up here just so I can kind of show you what it's going to look like as you do the installation. And once we've done that, we have a PBI Viz utility. So I'm going to call PBI Viz install cert. And what that's going to allow me to do is now to install a self-signed certificate on my local machine so that when we use Node.js for debugging, we have local host as a HTTPS address. Okay, now that we've installed a certificate, we're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and create our first visual, PBI Viz New, and Viz01 is the name. Now, when you create a new visual, it creates a project. So we'll move over to the project and say code dot. Code dot allows me to bring up Visual Studio Code. Now, in Visual Studio Code, there's the Visuals TS file. I'm going to go ahead, open the Visuals TS file, and they give me enough Hello World code just so I can start the project and test it. So PBI Viz Start is going to start the Node.js debugging session inside there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move into Power BI. So we're going to log on to my personal workspace. And I'm going to go to any data set because that creates a new report for me. And I look over and I don't see the developer visual. We go to Settings. Once we go to settings, there's developer setting. And once I turn that on, we're going to see the developer visual. Now I'm going to take the developer visual, drop it on. And my visual is basically running in that Node.js debugging session inside there. Now there's a couple different buttons to do the refresh, to toggle re auto refresh on, to look at the data, to basically get help and to send feedback. Okay. Now, Let's say that we want to move back to Node.js and do a simple update right here. Now, I'm going to make the update. Just a second, I'm going to save the file. But what I want to do is let me get the console behind. And I'm going to save the file. And what you're going to see is code automatically starts running to rebuild the project. And then I can hit refresh. Now, let's open up Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code. But now there's a open folder command. And so I can open my visual in that folder. And so for me, I just kind of like the Visual Studio experience a little bit better than Visual Studio Code. Note that everything is good to go. We can open Node.js style packages in this new version of Visual Studio. I can see my code right here. And now let's make a couple changes. So let's get rid of some of this stuff they put into that uh, Hello World implementation. And I'm just going to add some code that's going to create a simple HTML table. And note that you can use that TypeScript syntax where you have the dollar sign and curly braces, and we could basically put our TypeScript code inside there. And so I'm just using the options parameter that was passed to me. And so now let's go ahead and do our update. And what you can see here is now I've created a little table. Now, one problem I have is whenever I drop it and it stops, too many significant digits. Let's go ahead and patch up our custom visual. I'll come back here into Visual Studio. We'll write a little bit of code to say two fixed two. So basically, let's try it out with a uh, two decimal places inside. So I write my code. I save my file. The watcher automatically rebuilds. I go ahead and refresh. It looks great. Okay. I still don't like 
any significant digits. Let's go back and remove those as well. So I'll go back here and we'll switch that to zero and zero. And now that we've done that, hey, that looks great. Okay, we're almost done. One more thing I wanna do. Let's go ahead and open up the .less file. The .less file is where you add your CSS, except when you add it with less, you can add things like variables and you can take HTML element tags and nest them inside, which you can't do with CSS. And then it basically just rebuilds the CSS. So now that I've added some styling inside there, basically you can see that everything's good to go. Once again, this is Ted Patterson. I'd like to thank you for watching and leave you with a call to action. If you wanna join a user group full of passionate and very smart people, join us at pbiug.com, the Power BI user group. If you're looking for hands-on training, come visit us at criticalpathtraining.com, home of Power BI Bootcamp and Power BI Developer Bootcamp.